Thank you. So I want to talk about something that's even more serious than the talk that we just heard. And uh, I think uh, some of the slide disappeared when you copied it, but uh, what I want to talk about are self-reflective systems. So what's a self-reflective system? It's a machine that thinks about itself. And why are we interested in those kinds of things? Well, we're uh, interested in uh, technology, and machines are all around us, and they do things. And one of the things I want to talk to you today about is this idea that I see creeping into uh, in more and more machines is this ability of a machine to think about itself, what it itself is doing. So uh, there's uh, lots of robots out there, for example, that do all kinds of things. And all these robots today are machines that are just programmed to do something. They kind of interact with their environment. They might learn a little bit, but they're mostly static. Even a robot that can play a violin, one of the greatest things that was recently released by, I think, Toyota, is really just a choreographed machine. It just does its thing. It doesn't think about it. It doesn't enjoy the music. It doesn't do anything. A Roomba that cleans uh, the floor around the house, it does its job really well, but it doesn't think about it. It's not enjoying it. It's not hating it. It just does it, right? So at some point, we're going to get to machines that can actually think about their own experience. So I want to give you a, a simple example of what I mean when I say a self-reflective system. So here's a robot. This is a real robot that we actually have in the lab at Cornell. You're welcome to come and see it. And it's unique in that it has, it needs to learn how to walk. It has a couple of motors, uh, motors uh, in the knees and the hips and a couple of tail sensors. And what's interesting about this robot is that this robot is not interested in doing anything in particular. It's just interested in thinking about itself. It's interested in figuring, figuring out what it is. So what this robot does, it begins to uh, move around uh, randomly. And as it moves around, it collects information. It senses information about itself. It senses its motions, its acceleration, when it hits the ground and so forth. And after a while, it begins to form a self-image, literally an image of what it looks like. And if you actually peek inside, you might actually see that this robot begins to form a picture that has indeed four legs, that has motors in the right place. In the beginning, it doesn't know what it is, but after a while, it, it creates this, this form. And this form allows it to do all kinds of things that it uh, wouldn't have uh, thought of doing uh, to begin with. So it's not being programmed to do anything. It's not being programmed to react. It's not being programmed or choreographed to do something specifically, but it's just kind of gradually moves around. I see I'm getting some free time here, so uh, <laughs> something, uh, okay, so there you go. So after a while, here you can see a picture of uh, this robot that actually moved around. And on the left, you can see the actual physical robot, and on the right, you can see the self-image, the, the, the picture that uh, this robot created of itself. And this is a kind of rendition which, which allows it to do things. So to see what happens, to test this, we chopped off a leg of this robot. You can see here, this leg has been removed, and we watch what happened. And what happens is the robot begins to feel uneasy. It begins to test itself. It feels that something has changed. And after a while, if you actually look inside, you can see that its self-image, its image that it created of itself, has also lost a, uh, uh, a leg, and it kind of, uh, if you can see there, there's a picture of before and after this kind of uh, damage. The bottom picture, you can see the robot without the leg, and on the right, you can see the self-image that it created uh, that also has lost a leg. And this is without being programmed. It's not, there's no sensor that says the leg came off and so on. So where is this all going? So here, what we're doing now is we're trying to take these robots and see if a robot can have feelings about another robot, <laughs> all right? So we really want to uh, see if we can get these, these machines to, uh, to have feelings about each other. And uh, you know, if we can do that, uh, maybe interesting things uh, will happen. <laughs> so maybe we'll have more robots uh, later on. So this is kind of where we're trying to push uh, this idea. Now, you might think this is all about robotics, but it's not. It really can apply to any, almost any inanimate object that you can think of. This is the, the footbridge that crosses uh, the gorge. And uh, <coughs> when you can walk across this, bro uh, this uh, bridge every morning, and while I cross this bridge, I have a lot of time to think, what would happen <laughs> if one of the elements of this bridge uh, would be a little bit weaker than it uh, should be? And so 
wouldn't it be great if this bridge could actually think about itself and can actually imagine what's, uh, what's, uh, what it is and it could actually warn me about feelings it has about itself. And in fact, we did some experiments, not on the real bridge, but in simulation, and a, ridge, a bridge that vibrates itself in random ways and feels it, senses the vibration, can actually create a self-image of itself and can detect when something is wrong, when the link is a little bit weaker, or, with, or when something needs replacement. So the idea is that these self-reflecting systems is not just about robotics uh, or inanimate ob or, or you know, in intelligent systems. It can be anything that can start uh, taking care of itself. So the bottom line is that I think in you know, maybe 10, 20 years, we'll, we'll kind of move away from these machines that are programmed and they just do what we tell them and that's it, to machines that actually think about their own experience and uh, try to improve their performance and kind of uh, and have feelings. So uh, it might even uh, eventually ha happen to buildings. Maybe your building will have sensors and will notice how people are moving around and will we'll form opinions about that and uh, react to it. Thank you.